why, I suppose, in effect, did you, having lost your daughter, then set up um, Silence of Suicide? I think the main impetus, once I got used to the fact, which you never do, that my daughter had taken her own life, was that the situation I was in was common to a lot of other people. And up until then, I hadn't realised. Up until I mentioned the word suicide at Anna's funeral, and people came out of the woodwork and said, y you, you've, you've said it. And you go, what? Said what? Suicide. We, we dare not speak its word, uh, its name. Uh, but we've also suffered a suicide in the family. It may be a brother, it may be a husband, it may be a sister, a close friend, whatever. And you just realised that because it's so emotionally charged for everybody, and because there's an element of everything that we're concerned about, at least concerned about admitting, namely guilt, anger, frustration, grief, all of them are mixed in a way that d doesn't apply to many other human situations. Uh, y you know, you lose a relative through natural causes, it's very upsetting, but you do talk about it. But you don't talk about it if it's suicide, because you think it's a reflection on you, yourself, and your family, which of course once it was regarded by the law as such. So I, I think it's overcoming that um, prohibition, taboo, call it what you will, that we felt, myself and Yvette uh, Greenway, felt it was necessary just to facilitate liberation. That's all we're doing. Liberating the soul, liberating the mind. So finally, people can feel able to talk about their innermost feelings without, without the feelings of guilt, anger, grief, and all the rest, just in a way and they appreciate the person next door suffered the same. And people come up afterwards and they say, thanks to both of us. Thank you. And do you find that uh, um, this is more common than people appreciate? Unless you've lost somebody uh, to suicide, you don't actually fully appreciate the stigma, the taboo, the upset, the alienation that it can bring. I think there's an increased awareness uh, of the, if you, as you call it, the taboo uh, the, and stigma that surrounds it because we're living in an age where the pressures on absolutely everybody, daily life, pressures, economically, socially, politically, security, all of it. Nobody anymore quite knows, has the permanence of recognising what's going to happen tomorrow. Everybody realises it's fragile, freebile almost. So they're concerned to, in a way, wonder whether they're going to wake up tomorrow and be in that position. And they're certainly aware, more aware, that people are succumbing to these pressures. It's now suicide anyway. It's become the biggest killer for men under 40, more than any other cause. And it's certainly high up for women as well. And there will be very few people, once you start talking, and these meetings we soon discover, who have not been touched in some way. And they just want the opportunity to reach out. And actually, you want the opportunity to reach out before you ever get to that situation. You want to be able to talk, feel free to talk, without necessarily feeling that you're admitting a weakness or something of that kind. University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.